Hello friends, welcome. Friends, yesterday I saw this article in the newspaper which talks about that the telecom industry seeks a ban of sale of Wi-Fi routers in India. So, this is the line which I would like to leave you to focus on. We would like to submit that the DOT is yet to take a policy decision related to the 6 gigahertz band utilization and therefore any sale of such Wi-Fi products which utilizes 6 gigahertz spectrum in a de-licensed manner is illegal and such sale would result in unauthorized transmission in our country, COAI said in a letter. So friends, what I plan to do in this video is to explain to you what this issue is all about so that you can understand that what is being talked about and how it is going to impact your lives as a consumer and how it is beneficial or not beneficial for India at large. That's the whole point about this discussion. So the title of this slide is Battle of Opening 6 GHz Band for Wi-Fi. Now for those laymen who does not understand anything about spectrum, don't get overwhelmed by this title and this use of word which are technical in nature which you might not have any clue. But be with me if you, I'm, I'm going to assure you that if you watch this video, then this video, through this video, even a layman will understand why a certain spectrum band is being used in a such a manner and why 6 gigahertz band, what is it all about and why it is important for your own personal lives. Whatever you do today in India and what you're going to do in future, and if you are a broadband user, if an IT user, how it is going to change your lives. So let's be with me and without wasting any further time, let's go in the presentation. So friends, the next chart that I have created talks about the Wi-Fi spectrum availability in India. Now friends, if you look at this chart, you will find that Wi-Fi is different from mobile services. Mobile services are using different spectrum band and Wi-Fi services uses different spectrum band. Both spectrum band are mutually exclusive to each other. Nobody will work in each other bands. Now first before I explain to you what these bands are all about, let's talk about what is a Wi-Fi system compared to a cellular system. Wi-Fi system is a system which works in a collaborative fashion means that it does not have to exclude another user within the framework in which you are operating. You could have multiple user, user, users sharing the same spectrum band simultaneously versus a cellular system where it is an exclusive band means that band cannot be shared among multiple users. The band is only for only one user. That's the difference between a Wi-Fi spectrum versus a terrestrial spectrum, right? So this is a Wi-Fi spectrum. And for terrestrial spectrum, only one user, one band. In Wi-Fi, multiple users can share the same band. Now in India, there are two bands, 2.4 gigahertz band, which has got total 80 megahertz of spectrum. And then 5 gigahertz band, the structure of the 5 gigahertz band will explain here. It starts from 5150 and it goes up to 5875 and total 605 megahertz of spectrum has been delicensed. So if you add 200 plus 405 because the in between the spectrum is not delicensed. So this is the two bands which are decided delicensed 200 megahertz and 405 megahertz. And if you add it comes out to be 605 megahertz. So this is the structure of a Wi-Fi band in India. Okay. So there are two bands which you can use 2.4 and 5. You might have already seen that routers are called as 2.4 gigahertz router and you will find that some routers have both the capability 2.4 as well as 5 gigahertz capability. Now how a Wi-Fi system works and how it compares with a cellular system. Let's talk about that because without understanding that nothing will make any sense as I when I will take you through my future slides which, you know which I'm going to show you. Now if you look at that in a Wi-Fi system, multiple users, that, that is user number one, user number two, user number three, four, five, and there could be multiple other users, they are sharing the same spectrum band. This is a common band. This can be either 2.4 
or it can be 5 gigahertz right both the bands are available you can you have to share the band it is not for mutually exclusive usage okay so what happens is that suppose let's say if you have a chunk of spectrum it can be anything let's say 200 megahertz so what you do is you break this spectrum into smaller chunks so for the sake for the sake of uh, uh, clarity let's give a size of this block right and it may not add up to 200 megahertz it doesn't matter so let's say that this is a, a size of let's say 20 megahertz okay so we have got a 20 megahertz block here block number one block number two is also 20 megahertz block number three is also similar four is also same five is also same six is also same so normally what happens in a conventional terrestrial spect uh, system the whole block of spectrum whole size of the band which may be 200 300 whatever it is is being used simultaneously by one user whereas in case of wi-fi every user will get a smaller chunk of the block so like for example this user user number two is randomly selects the block, block number one which at that point of time is a block which does not have any usage from any other user means what happens is that if there is a router here which he is using user number two that router will sense the whole band it will sense this whole band and within this band it will find a block which can be one two three four five six any block which has got the least interference so let's say user number one gets locked onto block number one user number five comes in it locks onto block number three user number um, uh, three uh, block gets locked onto uh, blo block number six and so on right and there could be some blocks like block number three lying unused so one can very clearly see that even though the total quantum of spectrum is 685 megahertz of the, of the total quantum you are not have you don't have the luxury to use the full capacity of the spectrum it all depends upon what block size you are using and how many of the block size are assigned means what is the because these block sizes can be of different size i for the sake of simplicity i just chose 20 megahertz it can be 40 megahertz 80 megahertz depending upon the capability of the band and you will understand as i take you through this presentation so you never get to use the full band that is very very important you only get a fraction of the band and therefore your data capacity that is the pipe capacity is limited by the size of this band and this can be 20 megahertz 40 megahertz 80 megahertz depending upon what block size you get which is interference free so this is a very significant difference between a wi-fi system versus a mobile network system when you look at the size of the spectrum band you can't make apples to apples comparison both the systems are different and therefore the capacity that you get which is directly proportional to the quantum of spectrum that you are able to use at any point of time is much less in case of a wi-fi system so that is very important point to understand so let's go to the next chart the next chart basically says so let me just put, take my face out of the system I, i'll just put my pointer again so the next chart basically says which i told you one block wi-fi system only uses one block at a time so that is the problem with the existing wi-fi system second is not only it uses one block at a time it also uses one band at a time so as i told you that it will choose the most interference free block 20 megahertz 40 megahertz 80 megahertz 160 megahertz block size from that particular band which is only one band now let's go to this particular chart again in this chart you will find that the 2.4 gigahertz band has only 80 megahertz of spectrum whereas in case of the 5 gigahertz band has got 605 megahertz of spectrum therefore the con there is a constraint in the number of blocks that 2.4 gigahertz band will support because it can support block size of what one uh, uh, three blocks of 20 mega uh, four blocks of 20 megahertz and then two blocks of 40 megahertz and one block of 80 megahertz right otherwise because it can't really fit any any other block size whereas 5 gigahertz has got better capability to support larger block size and more number of them so what i have done is i have created this is this uh, chart which kind of maps to different channel size 
uh, and the number of possible blocks for that particular band. Like I told you that you know in 2.5 you have got these these many block sizes, and in 5 gigahertz you have got these many block sizes, and the higher block sizes of 5 megahertz of 160 uh, um, megahertz channel size is only three. Right? It can't be more than that because it is not possible to support more than that. If you look at the diagram, you will yourself be able to understand. So that is the basic problem with the current Wi-Fi system and that's why the speed of the current Wi-Fi system is constrained by these rules. These rules which I defined, both this one block and one band. Now, the new Wi-Fi system, which is called Wi-Fi 6. What are the capabilities of this new Wi-Fi system? Let's understand this, which is very important. Then only you will be able to appreciate what we are talking about here. So there is a concept called carrier aggregation. What is carrier aggregation? I have explained in this diagram. So we have got three different block bands. Let's say 2.4, 5 gigahertz and let's say 6 gigahertz also. And I'll talk about 6 gigahertz more as we go forward with this presentation. Now this band, these bands have got different uh, spectrum. One is 80 megahertz, another is 605 megahertz, another is let's assume that it is 500 megahertz. So what happens is that if you have the capability to carrier aggregation, then you can combine different block sizes, different blocks of different sizes from different bands as if they were all single one in, you know, in, uh, as if they were are part of the single one band, which means, let me explain. Let's say you have got 20 megahertz block here, you have got 40 megahertz block here, you have got 80 megahertz block here, and all this 20, 40, and 80 can be combined together and give you a larger block size. So your block size will become much larger compared to if you had only access to one of the bands. So that is called carrier aggregation. Now this carrier aggregation feature is called logical combining of spectrum from different bands, which is not a phenomena which we have seen before Wi-Fi 5. Wi-Fi till Wi-Fi 5, this capability did not exist. Wi-Fi 6 have this capability to aggregate different blocks of different spectrum uh, different um, spectrum blocks from different bands and combine them into a larger block size and that is very very significant because as i as you have seen in this earlier earlier chart that your data speeds is depends upon what, what kind of block that you get to uh, use depending upon what kind of frequency uh, you know interference that exists in that particular uh, band now if you have an ability to access multiple bands simultaneously then the probability of you finding a block which is free of interference within these three bands is extremely high so then you can basically pick and choose different blocks and then combine them into one band and that will give you drive more speeds and you will be able to use spectrum more efficiently okay now let's go to the next chart. The next chart basically says, the next chart basically says that, which basically what I what I've done here is, I am making a point here that you know if you don't have six gigahertz band, which is the band here. Let me just move my face from here. Then yeah, I think it is okay. So let's say that if you don't have this new band, six gigahertz band, okay this is gigahertz spectrum band then if you just have 2.4 and 5 gigahertz spectrum band then this wi-fi 6 is useless means that you don't have to you don't need wi-fi 6 why because if you look at this 2.4 gigahertz band the total spectrum is only 80 megahertz right so you have very limited choice in this 2.4 gigahertz spectrum to combine right most of the blocks are available and will be likelihood with they will be free will be in the 5 gigahertz spectrum band so you have only one spectrum band to choose from to get a larger block size the 2.4 doesn't make any sense because the band size is very less so then why do you need carrier aggregation you what are you going to do with carrier aggregation therefore you need to have an equivalent band with a larger spectrum size for delicensing, which is the six gigahertz band where 500 megahertz spectrum can be uh, assigned. You actually can do more, but at minimum 500 megahertz spectrum can be made delicensed. So you could, you can now have the capability to get larger block size, let's say 80 megahertz year and then 80 megahertz year or 160 megahertz year, 160 megahertz year, two block size you can combine and create a larger block size. And therefore your data speeds of Wi-Fi will significantly increase. 
Now you may say that I am anyway getting very high speed of Wi-Fi. Why should I worry? So I will tell you that why you need. We will go to the next slide to talk about. But before that, I will give you a summary that how many block sizes you will be able to create if you aggregate 6 GHz band and then you see that earlier the number of block sizes without 6 GHz band the number of block sizes were limited right like for example 160 MHz the number of block sizes of uh, you know was only 3 here right so you are only 3 here for 160 MHz so let me just do this so you see here I don't know what is happening here Ah, yeah. So this is only three here, right? Now with uh, with the with six gigahertz adding together, you get another three. So total it becomes six six numbers, right? Now, now you didn't have an option of three twenty megahertz of block size here in five five gigahertz. Now with six gigahertz, you get at least one block. If you only have five. 500 megahertz so you have got one block of 320 megahertz so your data speed can be significantly more compared to if you have only 80 megahertz or 160 megahertz now let's talk about the need for higher wi-fi speeds why do you need higher wi-fi speeds let's talk about that requirement now this is a typical free space path loss diagram now friends you don't have to be a technical expert to understand this be with me and i will explain to you what is going on here very in simple terms so what is this diagram all about is that i have created a y-axis here and an x-axis here okay what is in the y-axis the y-axis is nothing but the path loss means it basically tells you that what will be the data speed as simple as that because higher the path loss the lesser will be the data speed just be with me in this particular way of mapping right this diagram and this is a distance from the router means suppose this is the place where your router is you are one meter away from the router you will have a lower path loss and if you are two meter your path loss will exponentially increase but it will be still within a respectable uh, you know value but if you are let's say around 8 meter you can see your path loss is exponentially decreasing now one thing to notice here friend is that the path loss for 2.4 gigahertz band and 5 gigahertz band is different you see it is minus 40 dbm and it is minus 47 dbm what is dbm dbm is a unit of ratio 3 dbm is typically half let's say if you have a power of 1 watt and you say there is a 3 dB loss then that power will become 0.5 watt as simple as that now if you get a let's say 6 dB then it will become 0.25 okay so imagine that if you get a 40 dB loss imagine that if you are transmitting 1 watt here how much power loss happens within a distance of just 1 meter imagine so if you are sitting right next to your route, router if you are using 2.4 gigahertz band, then you are going to get a benefit of 7 dB as far as power loss is concerned. But if you are using 5 gigahertz, then your power loss is 40, minus 47 dB versus minus 40 dB, dB. Okay. So that is the difference between 5 gigahertz band and 2 gigahertz band. In 5 gigahertz band, the path loss is significantly more. In 2.4 gigahertz band, the path loss is less but it is for both the path loss exponentially increases as you go beyond the, the router means if you are away from, away from the router then your path loss increases now if your path loss increases significantly your data speed will decrease so in order to get full uh, you know capability or harness the full capability of the, of the wi-fi system you have to be sitting close to the router but it is not possible all the time your router may be located in one of the room and you may be way away from the room so for you to get a reasonable speed here let's say if your router is located here you need to have a very high speed emanating out of this router so that when it reaches you it, it is still in a respectable form Okay, so that's the point which I'm trying to basically say here. Wi-Fi system has this problem because of some technical issues which I don't want to discuss here. It will make the video complicated. Another important point here to, to understand is that if there is a wall in between, which typically happens in case of rooms, then there is an additional 3 dB loss. To, to traverse the signal has to basically go through this wall. It will basically kill the signal by another. It will make the power by half. 
Okay, so that's another problem. So that is why it is important to drive huge capacity, you know, from the router to able to get a respectable speed when you are away from the router. And that's why you need high speed. If you are sitting close to the router connected with a, with a fixed LAN cable or a, a CAT5 connection, then you don't have to worry much. But if you are away from the router, you have to worry. So that is the reason why we need high speed. And why in case of 5G it is very very important? Why in case of 5G this high speed is very important in conventional uh, you know practice which may not you really don't care because normally you used to get a broadband speeds which are very very less. Now today broadband speed as high as one gigahertz is 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 becoming commonplace with uh, with FWA coming in with Wi-Fi with our fiber optic uh, links becoming much more thicker. So these kind of speeds are going to become very very important. Now assume that you are able to drive a very high speed within your house within the Wi-Fi router. Now your internal Wi-Fi, sorry, from the external system you are able to drive because this is coming from the outside. It can be either fiber or it will be a FWA 5G system. Within the router you are getting a very very high speed broadband connection, but your Wi-Fi router doesn't have the capability to drive that bandwidth. Then what is going to happen to these devices which are going to work in the building the house? They are going to not be able to leverage the full capability of this link. So it is not only important for you as a user to get the full flex flexibility of your Wi-Fi system, but it is also for the operator who is trying to drive more and more speeds. So I do not understand why COI is making it in an issue. Now let's come to the another important point. The point is what is the international situation as far as the 6 gigahertz band is concerned because internationally if the situation is aligned with what we are going to use in India then we will be benefited because then the devices which we are emanating from outside will be able to leverage the, those devices so that economies of scale can be uh, you know amortized over large volumes because these devices are sometimes very costly and you need to drive huge volumes to bring down the price of device now if you look at this full 6 gigahertz band which is a 1200 megahertz spectrum right this is a 1200 megahertz spectrum you will find that it has been broken down into two pieces one is 500 another is 600 megahertz now the whole world including China has delicensed this block 500 megahertz everybody I mean some regions have delicensed like US you know Saudi Arabia Korea Japan has delicensed the full band which is the 1200 megahertz spectrum right but some countries have delicensed only 500 now India if there is a problem with IMT spectrum which I don't think is a problem because this six this uh, six gigahertz band is a high frequency band it does not penetrate indoor because in if you look at the current spectrum situation you will find that uh, mo most operator has got uh, in 3.5 gigahertz band 130 megahertz of spectrum 100 megahertz of spectrum and 26 gigahertz band some operators have 1 gigahertz of spectrum so they have huge amount of spectrum for their external broadband requirement so if this spectrum and these spectrum 3.5 and six, and uh, uh, was 26 does not penetrate indoor they don't go go inside you need to have an FWA system to get the signal inside. It does not naturally penetrate in, indoors, right? Only the low frequency band like uh, a sub gigahertz band will penetrate indoors. Now, if that is the situation, if this, it does not penetrate indoor and you are only for, you, you know, thinking of external uh, IMT, you have got sufficient spectrum. So for indoor, this bottleneck that I spoke about, that the Wi-Fi router is not able to communicate with the device when you have high speed broadband connectivity coming inside your house, that is the most essential thing and that is why what happened what has happened is internationally everybody has opened up this band of 500 megahertz for delicensing in order to fully leverage the Wi-Fi capability some have done fully some have done only 500 megahertz but 500 megahertz has been internationally across all countries including China so everybody has delicensed. So India should follow that path and I do not understand why the COI is blocking this 500 megahertz band also. It does not make any sense. I do not understand this logic at all. Okay. The other important point to note about here is that in India, there are existing usage in this whole spectrum band, which is the 1200 megahertz. There are existing microwave links here in this particular block because the 500 megahertz will end somewhere here, right? And then there are ISRO usages and then ISRO is using the spectrum on the upper side and there are point to point microwave link. Now the point here is that if you are going to use it for IMT, which is for external usage, these links have to be dismantled. 
ISRO has to be moved out, right? All the, because you can't use it otherwise. But unlicensed, you can use it, you know, in in conjunction with the external usage because it is within the within the house. And these microwave links are point to point. They are very sharp point to point, and they are not going to interfere with the unlicensed usage. So it makes sense because if you are going to call about call for IMT allocation of this particular band, the full band, you have to first get rid of these users first. Then only you will be able to get IMT access. But in the in the meantime, you can start giving unlicensed spectrum because there is no way it is conflicts with the existing usage because the, the unlicensed spectrum is low power and within the house. So these usages are not required to be dismantled. And this is going to be in alignment with international uh, assignment. And on top of it, you have got so much amount of spectrum for your FWA requirements, which you are giving anyway to the users. So you will be able to drive high speed broadband connectivity, which you are not able to do otherwise. And therefore, you need huge amount of speed up on the internal routers, which to in order to align the speeds of, of uh, your external broadband connectivity. So therefore, it makes sense for the six, uh, uh, you know, Wi-Fi 6 and the 6 gigahertz band to be delicensed so that you can use the leverage Wi-Fi capability. So, conclusion is very simple. Opening of the 6 gigahertz band in India is interest of India and its consumer. India can leverage international economies of scale of devices and equipment. India can be fully, will be able to exploit the FWA capability because as I told you that in case of 5G, you have got huge amount of spectrum and those spectrum is not getting used. They are like, for example, millimeter wave band is sitting idle. They are not doing anything. And 3.5 gigahertz band anyway has got a, a very poor coverage, indoor coverage and 6 gigahertz band is still at higher uh, level compared to 3.5. So 6 gigahertz band will still have poor indoor coverage so if you are not able to leverage fully the 3.5 gigahertz band because your grid your tower grid has not increased your tower grid the number of towers that you have deployed is in completely in alignment with your 4g connectivity and you have not enhanced your tower um, density because of the new 5g which has been brought in then what you are going to do with 6 gigahertz band unless you are increasing the tower density and you will be able to fully leverage the 3.5 gigahertz band which has not happened yet and operators will also gain from it because of their FWA operating will give will be fully capable of being used internally within the within the house of the consumer because the bottleneck will get removed the existing Wi-Fi systems bottleneck to fully leverage the block size and the interference free blocks can be clearly used, uh, you know, uh, unlock the potential of the full Wi-Fi system can be unlocked because you will be able to aggregate spectrum from multiple bands and your Wi-Fi speeds are going to increase significantly. So friends, I think you have understood this whole thing. It is a very simple concept. It is not a very difficult thing to understand. And if we are able to kind of uh, go uh, with this logic, it will make much sense for India and its consumer to do full usage of these new technologies and capability to improve the lives of the existing consumer and make India an IT hub. And because broadband is going to become the top of the day, you will require more data speed with AI coming in, cloud processing, etc. Your connectivity has to improve and you need full flexibility. You cannot be connected to the wire all the time. You should have the capability to move around with your house without, you know, diminishing the Wi-Fi signal, which is going to reach to your devices. So for that, you need higher capacity systems. So friends, I hope that you have understood this and, I, and if there are any questions, let me know. And uh, many thanks for your listening to the full video. I'll come back to you with a new video next time. Thank you very much.